Hey everybody, if you have a Behringer XR18 and you've been wondering how to interface it with Reaper so you can do multi-track recording and playback, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Let's go. Today I'm gonna to show you how to set this up on PC and on Mac. We're gonna do PC first because there's a few extra steps. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is download and install the PC driver, the USB driver for the Behringer. To get the USB driver, you're gonna to go to behringer.com. You're gonna click on downloads. Then in this interface here, you're gonna scroll down in the first window until you see mixers. Then in the next window, you wanna to go to digital stage box mixers. Then jump over to product, click on XR18. Then you're gonna click on software. And then in the last, column you're going to click on drivers USB audio and what you want to do is download this latest driver 5.12.0 download it and install it once you've done that you're going to need to plug your Behringer into your computer with the USB cable now you need one that has ends that look like this so one is a USB type B and the other end is a USB type A a. So this is uh, this is USB 2.0. If you're looking at USB 3.0, the B looks a little different. So this is what you want. People usually think of these as printer cables, uh, but you want one that is specific to audio. So once you've got your cable, you've got your driver installed, plug the type B end into your mixer and the type A end into your computer. Okay, so our very next step is to open up the Xair Edit software on our PC so that we can set up our inputs and outputs. If you don't already have this software installed, you can get it from the exact same downloads page where we found the USB driver. So make sure you download it, install it, and here we go. With the software open, there's a couple of ways that we can set our channel inputs to be USB. The really slow way is to select each channel individually, and then under the channel tab, turn on the USB input button. When it's blue, you know that it's set up to use the USB interface. So that's the slow way. The quick way is to come over to your in out button and then under USB returns, watch if I click the analog button, you can see that my USB feed turns off in the selected channel. If I hit one to 16, that has turned on all the USB returns for channels one through 18. The first 16 are mono tracks, and the last two, 17 and 18, are a stereo pair that come in on your auxiliary fader in the Behringer hardware. You can also go over to your USB sends tab, and you have a couple of op options here. Your, your USB sends um, happen by default, but you can choose to either have one through 18, come in as individual mono tracks, or you can have one to 16 as mono, and then your left, right, also mono, but being fed by your master bus. I would say in most cases, unless you're doing something very specific, you're gonna have it set one to 18, so that you have use of all 18 individual inputs on the front of the mixer, going to Reaper as separate mono tracks. So with that done, the next thing we have to do is go into Reaper. So you can see I've already got a session open here and I've got a few tracks here for playback. The first thing we need to do in Reaper is go to Options and then go to Preferences. And then under our Audio setting and under Device, we wanna make sure that it's set to ASIO. And under ASIO Driver, you wanna make sure that it's seeing the X-Air ASIO driver, which is specific to the Behringer mixer. You also wanna have your inputs enabled if they aren't already, they should be by default. And you wanna make sure that if you're using all of your inputs, all one through 18, both to and from the software and to and from the mixer, that you set your range appropriately. So setting the first one to one and the last one to 18 means you are using all 18 channels in a row, same thing for the output range. Set your first one to one and your last one to 18. Again, if you were doing something specific or you were only gonna use a certain number of channels, you could set those specific channels to be in your first and last range and then it would only work with those channels. Everything else you could use um, separately either for analog inputs on the mixer or something else that you're trying to do. Once you've set that, you're gonna click OK and then the next thing you have to do is set your hardware outputs 
So those are the outputs that take the information from Reaper and send it back to the mixer. So this section here above your fader, this is where your hardware outputs go. So you can choose any empty slot. You can see I've already got my output set, but to show you how you do that, you can click on a slot, then choose add new hardware output and choose the appropriate channel. If you're doing one-to-one, -one, uh, meaning channel one is one, channel two is two, and 18 is 18, then obviously you're gonna choose channel one for the output on your first channel and channel two for the output on your second channel and all the way down the line to 18. I'm not doing a full 18 channels here. I've just got a select few tracks for us to, to play with, um, but that's how you set your hardware outputs. To set an input, you click on the arrow at the top of your fader and choose input mono and then choose the channel that corresponds to what you're doing. I have a microphone plugged into the first input so obviously on channel one I'm going to use input one. Now we're not going to look at the input just yet let's actually see if we have signal coming from our tracks in Reaper back to the console because with our in and out set under our options and with our hardware output set here on the track, I should be able to hit play and have information show up in the mixer. So let's give it a play and see what happens. There we go. You can see that we've got channels playing. You should be able to hear it. And if I look at our XR software, you can see that the information is coming back. If I jump back to Reaper real quick and hit mute, on a couple of channels and jump back here you can see that that information is no longer coming back to the mixer. So that means we have successfully brought information from playback from Reaper into the mixer. So now how do we get information going from the mixer to Reaper? Let's just find an empty spot here in the channel. We'll zoom in on it a bit once we've selected it. So I'm in the first channel and as we already looked at, I set my input on channel one to be channel one from the mixer. So if I turn on record and bring over this microphone and check, 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 we can see signal and we can hear signal. The reason we're already hearing it, even though we're not actually doing anything, is this little button here next to the record enable. This is your record monitoring. It's off by default. I already had mine turned on. But if I turn that off, check, check, check. Now it's on again, so you can hear me. Turn it back off. It's off, and now you can't hear me through the microphone. So we'll turn that on. We're record enabled, and now I'm actually going to hit the record button, and we'll see if we can get some signal into Reaper. Check, check, one, two, check, one, two, recording my voice through this microphone. Let's see if it plays back. So turn off recording. Oops, let's stop this, sorry and turn off recording for the track. And now if I hit play, it should play back what I just recorded. Check, check, one, two, check, one, two, recording my voice it's through working. this microphone. Let's see if it plays back. And you can see that it's also coming back into our mixer on channel one. And that is because our hardware output for that channel is set to channel one on the mixer. So there you go. We have signal going from our mixer to Reaper and coming back from Reaper to our mixer. And that's it for PC. Now it's time to have a look at Mac. Okay, looking at our Mac, we can see I've got another multi-track session open. It's actually the same session we are using on PC. Now, the first thing to note is that we don't have to install a USB driver for Mac. Mac's core audio app will automatically recognize your XR18 when you plug it in. But to make sure we're looking at the right device and using the right device for our input and output, here's what you should do. Let's open audio MIDI setup. I use the shortcut, but you can also find it by this icon. Um, or you can come into Reaper, you can go into Options, Settings, and under Audio Device, if you click this button, Audio MIDI Setup, it brings you into the same window. So you can see I've got XR18 here as a device, and if I right click on it, I have the ability to choose use this device for input and use this device for output, which I always set it to that way when I've got it connected to my computer, regardless of whether I'm using it for Reaper, I can use that device for regular input and output. So with that selected, we can close our audio MIDI, 
And here in Reaper, again, we go into options and into settings. And under our audio setting and under device, we have less options here than we did in PC. It's very simple. You just wanna make sure your audio device is pointed at the XR18 as we saw in our audio MIDI settings. Once that's done, you're basically ready to go. So you can hit apply, hit okay, okay and then come into your window. So the next thing to do is to set up our hardware outputs. Here are your hardware output slots. You can see I've already got mine set, but to set it, you click on it, choose add new hardware output, and then choose the output that is appropriate to the channel you're sending. If you're doing something specific, you can set it to any channel you want. Otherwise, you're just gonna set channels one to 18 to come out through one, two, three, four, all the way up to 18. Once you've done that, the next thing to note is where you set your inputs on the channel. The inputs are done at the drop down in the gray section here, right above your fader. You choose your input and then of course choose the corresponding hardware physical input that's on the mixer. In my case, I have my microphone plugged into input one. So on the first channel, I'm gonna choose one as my input. So with all that set, I should be able to hit play and we should be able to hear the multi-track come back and we should see it in our XR edit software. So let's try that. Success. You can see I'm playing back and it's showing up in the XR software. So if I start muting channels here in Reaper, you can see them disappear from the playback in our XR software. So we know that that is working. So the next thing to do, oops, the next thing to do is to actually see if we've got signal coming back from our mixer into Reaper. So let's just zoom out. Let's pick a new spot, new blank spot. We'll zoom in. I'm in the first channel here, so of course I'm using input one, and we're gonna set this channel to record. And this icon next to it, record monitoring, is currently set to on. If I turn that off and I bring over my microphone, we can see that there's information coming into channel one, but we can't hear it. If we want to hear it while we're working on stuff, you need to turn your channel input monitoring on. So now you can see the information and you can hear the information coming through the microphone. So with that set, I should be able to record right now and get information from the microphone going into our Reaper session. So let me hit the record button. Check, check, one, two. I'm recording my voice through this microphone. Let's see if it worked and if it'll play back. Oops. Okay, so you can see I've got a waveform there. That's good. Let's turn off the recording and let's hit play. Check, check, one, two. I'm recording my voice through this microphone. Let's see if it worked and you, if it'll play back. So you can see it's playing in Reaper and you could see it coming through the return on our XAir software. Let's just play it again. Check, check, one, two. I'm recording my voice through this microphone. Let's see if it worked and if it'll play. Back. So that's good. We've successfully sent information from our mixer to Reaper and we've successfully had information come back from Reaper to our mixer. I hope this was interesting entertaining, educational. If it was any of those three things, please like, share, and subscribe. You know, the normal stuff. Check us out on Patreon. Um, or you can do a super thanks just down below, or you can even join the channel here through YouTube. Any of those things help us grow. Until we see you next time, thanks for watching here on Quick and Easy Quickies. Bye.